Hello everybody, Flick here and welcome to the first part in a series on Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I got the day one patch, that's why it says version 1.1 in the bottom right corner there. I have been looking forward to this for a long time as I'm sure you'll be aware if you've been following my 3 Ultimate series. Anyway, you can't see the bottom screen but trust me I have just literally started up the game. We'll go to new game, this first part will comprise of character creation, the intro quest and then one or two of the first three tutorial ones depending on how quick I can get through them. Anyway. Also, I'll be looking down at the lower screen a little bit for this first part, so apologies if it sounds like that's what I'm doing. Obviously, we're going to go with the name Flick. Uh, we don't need to worry about skin tone, face. What faces do we have available here? Let's have a little look. Face 2, face 3. There was actually a really funny one in the Japanese version. I wonder if it's still here. Uh, that's not quite it. Where is it? It's that one. <laughs> that's a great one. That was just known as the smug face. I, I quite like that one as well, the no eyes thing. Oh, that's just angry. Ah, it's a little bit too too happy for my liking. I'm tempted by that, just to be like a badass samurai with your eyes closed. That said, we'll just go with the default, I think. Yeah, why not? Actually, there's another... Oh, we could maybe add the scar here somehow. Ooh, that's weird. Could be a superhero? We could be Naruto. Uh, hmm, that's just scary. Let's just go with that eye color. Let's just go with blue hairstyle. Right. We're going to be hidden underneath armor most of the time anyway, so I don't think it really matters again. Let's see if I can recreate the one I was using in 3U. Uh, let's see here. It was most certainly not that. I think it was just the basic hairstyle I was using actually. Uh, there is a page two here, so let me just have a look at these. Yeah, I think it was just the basic hairstyle I was using. It was very boring in 3U. So let's just go with that. Change the color to... I don't know, red? Oh, no, that's way too bright. Um, let's go with, like... I'm using my finger on the lower screen, incidentally. There we are. Yeah, that's more like it. That'll do. We'll go with that. Go to back. Go to back. So that's hairstyle features, clothing. We need to do voice and clothing. Ah, uh, that will do. Oh, we can change the color of this as well. Let's go for red. Yeah, that's good. And the voice. They're all basically the same ones. There's, there's actually tons of them. That's a bit. Hmm. How many voices are there anyway? Oh, there is actually just uh There's 20 voices. Which one shall I go for? It's a bit too young sounding. That just sounds weird. <laughs> Alright, that will do. Type 12. Done. We are done. Now we have to customise our palaco. Finalize your hunter and move on to Palaco Creation, yes please. Alright. I thought long and hard about what to name my cat, and I decided it's gonna be Odessa. And I honestly don't really care what it looks like. Do I want it to have a little top or well, it doesn't matter because it wears the ace armor anyway, so you won't see. Eh, the default ears will do the voice. Oh, they're all terrible. And the coat. Um, I'll just go with the default there as well. Eye shape. Oh, we can have it be injured. That's a shame. Now nah, we'll just go with that. And tail type. Yeah, let's give it the squint tail. My dog has a squint tail. Confirm. Finalize your palaco. Next, choose the initial settings for the touch panel and the HUD. So it's just basically what you want on the upper screen. I believe it puts the map. The top screen isn't big enough to warrant having the map, so you'll see it during loads, but I'll have it on the bottom screen. So there we go. We will save it to the slot, and we will get started with the intro quest. Where we get to fight... Oh, hang on. Turn off certain beginner-friendly tutorial messages. Also, ignore the phone that appear during the quest. Yes, I'm actually curious how many tutorials it's going to skip if I set that option. I have played it. I have played through 4, not 4G, so I'll be curious what changes there are, if any. Uh, right, so we will get into the intro. Also, I was just muting my phone so that doesn't happen again. 
where we get to play with Darren Moran naked. Because, you know, how else would you start a game? I'm also very curious about the various names characters have and if it's literal translations or if they've done their own thing with the translation. But yeah, if you fought Jen Moran in 3U or any other games he was in, I don't actually know which one he was added in. You'll be used to what we have to do here. So he's the Caravaneer. Won't be long, Hunter. If the Valhabar pub poured out drinks now, we could reach them before blah blah blah. You want to come over here and see for yourself. By the way, I'm using the CirclePad Pro. So I'm using the two analog six setup. If you are curious. And he'll have us look up into the air, I believe. Just a bit more and you can spot Valhabar on the horizon. I can smell the city from here, or maybe I've got something stuck in my mustache again. Ha ha! He likes laughing, this guy. Are you excited, Hus uh, Hunter, not Hustler? A bustling bazaar floating on the sea of sand ain't nothing or nobody you can't find there. This here is what I love about being the caravaneer, leading a big old caravan of trusted companions all over the world. Well, the trusted companions part is a work in progress, in fact. That's what brings me to Valhabar. Is it Har- it is Habar, right? It's two A's, not a Harbor. I'm looking to recruit three more companions to join me on my travels. Whenever, uh, whatever you're in the market for, be it good folk, good deals or good intel, Valhabar, yeah it is Habar, is the place. And the barkeeps don't water down the drinks. Well, not as much as most places, at least. Ahem! But no time for that. I won't settle for sots and layabouts. The caravaneer puts his hopes and dreams in his comrades' hands, you know. So what about you, Hunter? What business do you have in Valhabar? Ah, I see. Come to officially register as a hunter, have you? That's right. They do have a gathering hall. And no shortage of hunters seeking quests. See. He wants me to look up at the, uh, yeah, Remobra. Right over there. So, there we go. Done. So that's for configuring and getting used to the touch pad camera if you're not using the CirclePad Pro. I find it much easier to use the Pad Pro, so that's what I'm doing. That's what I played through 4 with as well. And now we'll have a rude interruption to our conversation with the Caravaneer in the form of giant sand whale right there. Yeah, he's pretty big. He doesn't operate exactly the same as Jean Moran. He does have some different features. The way you fight him is essentially the same though. He just does a bit more to try and fight you off. You are literally invincible for this part of the game though. You cannot die as far as I'm aware anyway. But here he comes. Oh no, the hat. The hat is actually important. I'm sure we'll save him though. And in we go to the first part of the fight and we're going to get attacked. I'm just going to stand here and take it. The Dare Moran, I was afraid of that. When you see a remover swarm you just know the Elder Dragon can't be far behind. Watch out now, don't fall off the ship. This is another new feature in this game. You can have uneven terrain where you have to use the R button to steady yourself otherwise you fall in. So we're about to do that here. I'm using the R button to cling on. I think it drains stamina when you actually have stamina, but right now we don't. Did you find your footing? Ah, what the, my hat, jumping jaggy. That's where I keep, dot, dot, dot. So now we have to go get his hat. Well, no time for that now. Listen up, Hunter, unless we can stop it, the Dad and Moran will crush Valhabar like a huskberry. I'll send out a distress call to try and buy some time. What's that, you're gonna try and get my hat back? <laughs> Did I say that? Did I really? I thank you kindly for it. If you make it back, you can climb onto that thing's back from its arm. Wait on the deck and I'll holler when it's safe. Again, if you're familiar with fighting a Moran of any type, you know what's coming. You just gotta wait for his arm to turn and then you run up. Now, run up its arm. I shall do. And we've gotta grab the hat and get the hell out of here. Good on you, Hunter. Be careful, looks like it's fixing to shake you off the Moran. Moran, rather. Ain't no moron. Can you make it back into the skiff? Sure we can. See? Safe. Much obliged, Hunter. Alright, I need you to buy some time. Sharing it with cannonballs should give it something to think about. The cannonballs are at the back of the ship. Again, if you know how a Moran fight goes, you know how the cannons work. You grab a cannonball, you walk much slower when you pick it up, and then you can blast the Moran with it, although you have to make sure he's not attacking you at the time. That's it. Yeah, I don't need to hear this. Thank you. Yeah, but he didn't really feel that one, did he? He might try and attack before I can get another one in. Uh, nope, nope, got time. Oh, gotcha. 
There you go, didn't like that one bit, did he? Har har, keep it busy just like that. Yeah, we're just buying the Caravaneer time. I believe he's about to do another free willy. Where is he? Yeah, yeah, there he goes. Right over the top. Also, by the way, I'm noticing that the game audio might be a smidge too loud. If it is, I will lower it for the next part. I forgot that you have quite a loud fight to open the game with. Right on the temple there. Cripes, that thing can leap. You don't see that every day, but this is no time for slack jawed gaping. Look at the touch screen and learn how to use it. I don't need the turret cam, I have a Circle Pad Pro, thanks. I will just turn the camera in the direction I want to face. The target camera is effective, I will say that. It's just I prefer having the two analog sticks. Just a little more time, keep it up. Will do, Carvineer, will do. He didn't feel that one. He should start winding up an attack soon. In fact, I think he's preparing it now. Oh, he'll do it now, he'll do it now. Yeah, great job, Hunter, but we're almost at Valhabar. It's time to pull out all the stops. Moran's got sensitive ears. It's how they monitor the surface when they're in the sand. Loud noises give him fits. you got to let it get as close as possible, then ring the hunting gong. So in other words, he's going to tell us when to ring the gong. In true Moran fashion. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here he comes. I would have pressed it now, but you have to wait till the cap caravaneer tells you. There we are. Down you go. I think we actually skipped part of that. He was supposed to launch an attack at one point and the caravaneer tells you to run over to him so that the attack misses you, but I guess I did too much damage too quickly. So now we're going to get the intro cutscene. Enjoy. And so that is the setup to the story. We technically helped fight off uh, Darren Moran. And we get roped into being the hunter that the Caravaneer wants, but we have to jump through some hoops for him first, which comprises of the tutorial of the game. That was the, the very basics that we got there. And this is our first of a few locations that we'll visit throughout the story mode of low rank. And we'll get introduced to the various characters. So I'm very curious 
What names have been given? So on my lower screen I will have a map telling me where people are to talk to. You won't see that. Greetings Hunter, it looks like we both scraped through with their limbs. It's time we introduce ourselves proper. What do you say? They call me the Caravaneer. I run the caravan, of course. Lots of caravans pass through here. But mine's the only one worthy of a capital C. Har har. I got to tell you, precious few hunters could hold their own against that monster without preparation. Yeah, I did it naked. Have you got any work lined up? No? Good. Because I've got a job for you. The capital C caravan. That's a terrible name. What do we do? Well, what I do is hunt for treasure. Pure, unadulterated excitement. Me and the man over there. Who's he referring to? are trying to discover the meaning of this little doodad in my possession. I like to call the article. We travelled the world already and now we've come to Valhabar in search of three companions to help us. Companion number one is a cook, companion number two is a merchant, and number three is the hunter to protect the caravan. And who should I meet on the ferry but you? That's convenient. I call it destiny. Do you want to join capital C? Sure. Now we're cooking with wavering fire. This calls for a little entrance exam. So his first exam is to make him a well done steak, I believe, from memory. Yeah, fetch me a well done steak. Even a rare steak would do. I know how to make well done steaks, thanks very much. Yeah, so that's the Guild Sweetheart. I don't think that'll be our name. I guess we'll find out. Wait, the Guild Marm? Guild Marm? What does that even mean? Oh, they decided to name the smithy The Man. Hmm. The Man's been my partner for ages. You'd never know he was so dexterous from the look of him. Har har. And that house over there is our house. Don't be shy. If you're going to be one of us, you need your own personal space. We should also get our first set of item here. Items, rather. Our base gear, etc. We don't get our Palaco yet, though. Fun to get yourself ready and caravan armor. That's it. There we go. So what's equipped us with? Sword and shield. I don't really want a sword and shield, but let's go introduce ourselves to various people. So this is the guild card cat. We don't really need to worry about this. This is for street passing. No one in my rural area of Scotland has his 3DS really, so it's not going to be of any use to me. I will register it and turn it on though, just very quickly. Yeah, sure, I'll activate it. Sure, why not? Do I have to press anything on the lower screen? No? No, I don't. Good. Don't you nya at me, cat. Uh, I've got a tutorial on the lower screen, it doesn't really matter. About the courier, the inbox, street pass settings, that's fine. Street pass settings will be saved, that's... I thought I just saved it. Right, let's talk to the man. That is a questionable name. I would have just called him the smithy then if he's not going to get a proper name. He must be the brave one that was on the ship I heard about. He's a man of few words usually. He and I are old friends, me, I'm the smithy, I forge weapons and armour. Materials are of no use to you on their own, bring them to me and I'll put my hammer to use for a price. So when you get stuff off of monsters and whatnot, oh there's a tutorial along the bottom the screen telling me that, I don't really need to. And we can also make cat gear at him as well, but we'll worry about that when we actually have a cat. Uh, we also need to talk to the regular merchant up here, I'm not going to bother listening to this guy, he just sells base weapons and armour, we don't need it. We're going to be crafting everything we use basically. He doesn't even sell sundry items like uh, potions and whatnot. So yeah, we'll speak to the guild lady in a second. We also need to speak to the cook, I believe. Yep, we do. Mihao, welcome to Open Air Kitchen. You hungry? Then you came to the right place. Ah, you're the hunter who drove off the Daren Moran wearing just your underwear, Miao. Ha, I knew it. You are so strong. Yeah, I am. I just flexed and ran. So you eat food, if you aren't aware and you're new to Monster Hunter, to get increased health and stamina for hunts that you go on, as well as some other bonuses that you'll see when we get into the game. He's just teaching us this. You'll see me doing it, so that's why I'm fast-forwarding it. I'm trying not to, you know, bog this down with really, really basic stuff. Vouchers can be used to redeem food meals for free. And this person over here is the lady from 3U, I guess. Well, it's the same skin and same voice, but I don't know if it's literally the same merchant. But she sells you your basic stuff, and right now it'll just be herbs and whatnot, yeah. That will improve though. Also, I'm going to spend some of my money right now on iron picks and bug nets. Because I don't need the money for anything else, really. Who else do we need to speak to? Uh, just the guild sweetheart. So it is guild marm. I don't even know what that means. Guild marm isn't a word. Hey there, can I help you? What's that? You're a hunter and you want to join the caravan? Hang on now, did the boss mention a new hunter? I guess I could go check with him, but that would be awkward. So, yes, I've been expecting you. 
I'm sure we'll get to know each other very well, so let's get down to business, Doodle. Doodle? Can I call you Doodle? No. No, no you may not. At the moment I'm afraid I can only offer you caravan challenges. This is before we get access to guild quests and whatnot. So let's get right down to those challenges. Take a look at this one star quest first. You should see one called Stake Your Ground, where to make a well done stake, or a rare stake for the caravaneer. And we leave you there. Yes, okay. Well, actually, I think we will stop this first part here, and next time we will take on the caravaneer's quest. I want to check the audio levels and whatnot as well. So I hope you enjoyed the other part, or the next part rather, should be up later tonight. In the first part of a series, I always ask this please especially show your support here by leaving a like or a comment. It'll help encourage me to do more. And subscribe if you want to see daily gaming stuff. My name has been Flick. This is the start of my Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Adventure, and I look forward to doing more. See you next time. Ta ta for now.